Welcome to Ask GMBN. This is our weekly show where you ask us questions and we hopefully answer them. Yep. You can get your questions in to the address on the bottom of the screen right there. And also you can add them in the comments. Use that hashtag Ask GMBN. Yep. Right, take it so away. Let's what we get got? started. First up, we got Joel Holding who asks, I just got a brand new Trek Roscoe 7 2019 model. Nice bike. And it has a 27.5 plus tire. And so, just need to ask, do I need a special inner tube or will a normal 650B tube do? Now, a normal 650B will do it. You can buy bigger tubes though. Yep. So you can do either way, really. Up to you, I would say. Yep. A normal one will suffice. Yeah. Um, next up is from Matt Dakin Photography and Videography. Are there any good full face helmets for a three year old that's hitting up pump tracks and kickers? Wow, mm. sounds like a pretty rad three-year-old to does. me. It does. I'm not even sure of this, actually. Um, yeah, there are actually a number of brands out there that do children-specific mountain bike helmets, both full face and trail lids. Um, take a look at O'Neill, uh, Fly, um, who else? Mongoose as well. But really, with children's heads, you just measure the circumference because it can be that maybe they don't need toddler specific, but youth and in some cases even adult specific. Mm. I know my little nephew has a really big head, so he actually wears <laughs> my old ones. <laughs> that is quite a big head. It is big Personally, head. I'd go for O'Neill if you get one, just so you'd be yeah. like a little mini grid minnow. Oh. I think that'd be cool. Cool. Uh, next up, we got Gething McFall, who says, I'm looking for a new trail bike. I'm five foot six, and I'm in between a small and a medium frame uh, for most of the brands. But what size do you recommend? Uh, size is definitely mm. a personal preference thing. There's no right and there's no wrong. I would always recommend someone to go on the bigger side, but as you're a bit shorter, then you definitely need to leave yourself enough clearance over that top tube. Uh, really, you need to try before you buy, I think, to be sure, because different brands do come up slightly different. Yeah, I definitely take a look at the geometries as well. I know I'm in a similar position. I'm just over 5'7", so I, I kind of fall on the cusp too, but I do take a look at brands who have fitting calculators on their website. So take a look at your inseam length and your reach as well, and just double check the geometries of the brands and models that you like. Next from E. Lambert. Um, how many tubes should I be carrying when I ride on the trails? How long is a piece of string, yeah, really? Um, to be honest, one should really be enough. Um, but where are you riding? How far are you going? Um, so many different questions. But we do actually have a video on essential items you should take on your mountain bike ride, which you can check out here. Then I've got a tube. I actually take a 27.5 press because that'll fit in basically anything. Some spare clothes, t-shirts in case I get wet. Uh, then I've got a towel just to wipe myself down. Just a small one there. All right, straight back in. Now this one is wicked. So this is from Ben Rogers. Can you make GMBN clothes for kids? Because I really want the new jersey, but it's like 20 sizes too big. Mm. Well, we actually do have children's and youth sizes on our website it's a now. new range. There, there are, so from ages eight and upwards, I believe That's they right, are. That's yeah. um, So take a look over at our shop website and you can find a full selection there. They are so cool as well. Oh, Get involved. Right. Next up, we've got Tear Oasis G who asks, uh, hey guys, I've been riding my full suspension with a low seat uphill and downhill for five years now. Do you think it's a bad mm. habit riding with a low seat uphill? Well, yeah, 100%. Mm. So firstly, yeah. it's not gonna be that good for your legs, it's not gonna be good for your knees, because you can put all that power through them, and you're not getting the advantage of your full extension of your legs. Yeah. Put a saddle up, you'll be flying up those hills. Your legs work better, put your saddle down for descending. Yep, I agree. Get it done. Next up from Aaron J. Hall. I'm fairly new to mountain biking, welcome aboard. Uh, and I've got a 27 and a half plus with 120 mil of travel. It's a Cannondale Cujo 2. Uh, I see my riding trending towards jumps, drops, and more tech downhill. Uh, does this seem like a bike that'll stand up to those demands or should I consider a full suspension before I break my frame or myself? Well, I think you're definitely going to be a lot more comfortable on a full suspension bike, especially if you're looking to get a little bit more technical. Um, you're starting to get a bit more air and you're trying to do more daring things. You will benefit a great deal from having a real shock. Um, but there's nothing to say that you have to upgrade to that from your hard tail, but it really depends on the progression of your riding because it sounds as if you're kind of just starting to creep out of that hard tail bracket. Yeah, I mean, definitely you want to concentrate on getting your riding skills up and just enjoying it. Don't feel the pressure of having to buy all this new kit. Like it's great and it does help, but really you just got to get out and ride before you can push it up to the next level. But I wouldn't worry too much about damaging your bike at this stage. It's when you start testing yourself out more, doing jumps and stuff like that, that you might find you start 
pushing those limits, but just enjoy it, I think. Next up, we got the A game. Now he says, I'm 15 years old and I ride a 300 pound Diamondback Sync 3.0. I love it, but it gets pretty tough on some of the black trails I ride. And I was wondering if you have any tips on saving up for a mountain bike like the Canyon Spectral. Now I'm terrible at saving money. So I'm probably not the best person yeah, to ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not the best to be fair, but we're saving with anything. Well, firstly, see if you've got any old stuff you can sell yep. and you can start your little savings account off from there. I mean, this is more of an adulting conversation, it isn't is. it, than <laughs> anything else? But saving, you know, just save what you think you can afford to save each month, basically. Never go too much because you'll find you leave yourself short in your main sort of bank. And really, you just want to be chipping away. Yeah, bit see if bit. you can pick up odd jobs around the house, yeah. you know, see if you can make some money on the side elsewhere, whether, like Doddy says, selling bits and pieces. Mm. I think, you know, you could either get a savings account that you can put all that into and keep it separate um, to accumulate money in, or you could go old school and get yourself a piggy bank, one that you definitely cannot open unless you have to break it open. Um, In fact, that's, that's, that's a good shout out, actually, doing that. Yeah, because you could just do pound coins. Anytime yep. you're lucky enough, for example, to have pound coins or dollar coins, yep. just chuck a few in, forget about them. Exactly. And then down the line, you're going to have a big amount of money saved up. And make sure you ask for Christmas and birthday money too. And don't spend <laughs> it, save it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alex O'Meara, ask GMBN, can you put 27 half inch wheels on a 29 inch frame? Well, you can but it may affect the well the setup of the ride your mm. comfortability and the geometry because that that bike and that frame has been built for a 29er so changing the wheel size is going to seriously affect that yeah actually neil did a really good video recently on one using one of our scott bikes that takes both 27 and a half and 29 inch wheels and he experimented by having a 29 on the front and a 27 okay. half on the back so actually just going to throw you to that video to have a look at because that's pretty helpful and it'll tell you what happens to the bike when you do that and also what you need mm. if you want to do that um, well, it feels slack, you know, you just sit on a bike and I can see the fork like going away from me. So it does feel super slack. I mean, all I've really done is just reduce the size of the rear wheel. So that is going to drop everything as well. So BB is quite low. All right, now it's time for quick fire. Always my favorite part of this show. Yep. So Hit us up. To get started, we've got Desperate Dan 500 <laughs> who asks, should I have a low stem and high bars or a high stem and low bars? Low stem and high bars, that's what I choose. 38 mil bars and a nice little stumpy stem, that's the way. Next up we got user 9367 who says, put the record straight, bum bags or fanny packs? Well, we're from the UK, it's bum bags. A fanny pack would mean something else. It would. <laughs> um, Gullible Gaming asks, hi, I was wondering what is the most important thing to have on a bike? Uh, wheels, you're not going anywhere without wheels. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> uh, James Smith says, is it possible to get GMBN stickers? If not, then why not? Uh, uh, then why don't you make them and sell them in the GMBN shop? We do actually make stickers, and when you buy some of our clothing, it does come with a sticker. Uh, the reason for not selling them on their own is, I'd imagine it probably costs too much to send out to everywhere in the world, but it is something we should look into. Yeah, definitely. Addison Gurillo says, I've been mountain biking for three months now and loving it. I currently cannot wheelie, manual or bunny hop, but which should I focus on learning first? Um, I would say learn the wheelie because that's the fundamentals to learn both the bunny yeah. hop and the manual. Yeah, agreed. Getting that front wheel up is yep. essential. Thomas Lee asks, what is the difference between cross country and enduro? Uh, cross country is literally the same as cross country running, so you're doing a loop and you're timed on the whole loop, so that's going up and down. Whereas enduro, you're really only timed on sections, even though you're still doing a big loop. Think of it as like rally driving, but yeah. on a bike kind of thing. And that's it, that's all we got time oh, for, for quick fire. Straight out, that I think that's quick. good, that I enjoyed good. that. Yeah. So, um, now if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more, then Ask yourself, are fat bikes cool, Doddy? Oh, I think they are cool. I'm not so yeah. sure. But you can find out by watching a video over here where Neil explains all. Yeah, and if you want to find out 10 essential phone apps for mountain bikers, mm -hmm. click right down here. Pretty useful video, that. And if you've got any questions yourself that you want us to answer for you, then do make sure you leave them in the comments below. Um, but make sure you subscribe to the channel to watch more videos Get from us and give us a thumbs up on this one. <laughs>